Today, I'm finally going to describe the multiplex base editing of Beam 201, especially when it has advanced into the IND phase. Beam 201 is going to be game changing because of its potential for cure. You heard me right, it's cure, not treatment. But before that, let's cut into that intro. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. Before we dive into Beam 201, let's first understand the disease. I'm talking about a type of cancer known as T-cell, A-L-L in short. But before that, let's focus on the normal T-cells. These cells are derived from the hematopoietic stem cells located in the bone marrow. These HSCs will differentiate along the myeloid or lymphoid lineage. It is the lymphoid lineage that will produce lymphocytes like the B and T cells. Both are important cells which contribute to adaptive immunity, an important arm of human immunity, which protects you and I against an ever-changing landscape of infectious agents. And it is the T cells that can accumulate cancer-related gene mutations resulting in the transformation to cancer cell. This occurs at the rate of 0.1 per 100,000 cases, with significant variation in age, gender, and race. As a person ages, the chances of survival from T-cell ALL decreases from 51.9% to 0%! Ayo! Some of you may ask this question. If there are T-cell ALLs, are there B-cell ALLs as well? Yes, definitely. But T-cell ALL patients suffer from worse outcomes, one of which is relapse after cancer treatment. This is due in part to tumor heterogeneity, a concept I've discussed last week and the links are in the video description below. And second, refractory disease where the patient fails all treatments. <sighs> Clearly, this cancer is in dire need of a solution, which is what Beam 201 aims to be. So what do a normal functioning T-cell do? T-cells are subdivided into two populations by function. One group is called the T-helper cells and the other the T-cytotoxic cells. It is the latter that will be the focus of this video. As the name implies, they kill our own cells. Of course you might be thinking, huh? Why would my own T-cytotoxic cells want to kill me? One of the reasons is because sometimes microorganisms infect our cells. They do so to make use of our cells' replicative machinery to make more of them or they enter into our cells to hide from the hazardous environment outside a cell, which can comprise many immune cells and molecules they produce. Once the T cytotoxic cells recognize the microbially infected whole cells, they will initiate cell killing to trap them inside and prevent them from escaping and spreading. The key to cytotoxic T cells recognizing the microbially infected cells is the presence of a T cell receptor. So scientists were thinking, what if they can change these TCRs to recognize specific targets like those found on cancer cells? The result is something called the chimeric antigen receptor. In short, CAR on T cells, CAR-T. Chimeric because it contains human engineered parts joined to the existing backbone of the TCR. Beam wants to use these CAR T cells to hunt down the cancerous T cells and kill them. A few videos back, I talked about fate, links in the video description below, why I don't like that technology, because a large part of their program is focused on NK cells. Whilst NK cells behaves like T cytotoxic cells, they can only work with an additional antibody molecule, and that antibody is in turn produced by another pharma company. You need one and the other to make it work. They are just too many problems to solve with too many steps. Beam negates the need for antibodies by going the CAR-T route. 
that is far more elegant and less margin for errors. So the question is, what target should the car T-cells recognize? Beam have done their homework and they've decided on CD7. CD7 is a transmembrane protein found on the T-cells only. And they play a role in its development from the stem cell. Since only T-cells express this protein, it creates specificity to the T-cells only. And that includes the cancerous T-cells as well, creating a bull's eye on them. But wouldn't this kill all the T-cells, including the cancerous ones? We are not worried because earlier I mentioned about the hematopoietic stem cells and they are able to undergo asymmetric cell division. This results in one daughter cell going on to become a T cell, whereas the other reverts back to the original stem cell. We call this self renewal. Since the stem cells are not T cells, they do not express the CD7 and are therefore not targeted. And they will replenish the T cells once the CAR T cells take them out. But don't we already have immunosuppressive drugs that already do that? Unfortunately, they are not selective and eradicate all immune cells. It's better to at least have some immune cells around. In fact, purely based on CD7 alone, studies have already suggested its superiority in treating T-cell ALL. Another question is, the CAR T-cells are T-cells, right? Wouldn't they kill themselves since they also have the CD7 as well? You see my friends, this is where Beam's ingenious multiplex base editing comes in. Not only does Beam 201 cells recognize CD7, it also has Beam's trademark base editing to shut down its own CD7. That means it will kill the cancer cells without killing itself. And that is freaking important, isn't it? Remember I mentioned that fate has a big problem and that is because of the use of allogeneic cells? Let me rehash for you right now. The IPSCs are not autologous, which means removed from the host, made into an IPSC, which later becomes NK cells and then injected back into the same host. Instead, they are allogeneic, meaning it originated from another human. This is going to be another problem because we are not genetically identical to each other. For these NK cells to be injected into the recipient, there is a risk of graft versus host disease that may result even in death. To prevent that, patients need to be depleted of immune cells, which in itself is yet another problem. So the next question is, Beam will be using the cytotoxic T cells, which are also allogeneic as well. Wouldn't that be a problem? This is where the next two base editors targets two other different genes, which reduces tissue rejection and thereby solves the allogeneic problem. The first is done to silence the TRAC gene. This will shut down the original T cell receptor from the donor prior to the CAR T manipulation. Since part of this receptor is unique to an individual, there is a possibility that injecting a CAR T cell bearing the original T cell receptor will induce an immune response against this cell. By shutting this gene expression down, it also reduces the chances of rejection. To further reduce this rejection, another molecule known as CD52 is also base edited to be silenced. The presence of this molecule can result in the stimulation of other T cells. We don't want that to occur, especially if they are cancerous. Silencing the two additional genes by base editing means that the BIM201 can be used without any worries of the allogeneic cells being rejected. This is something that FATE is not able to achieve unless they license the technology from BIM. With the biggest problem solved, BIM did one more thing. They added the fourth gene target, PDCD1, for silencing by base editing. The reason is because the gene product is known to negatively regulate the activity. In the natural state, the T-cell activity is regulated in pulses, 
with a high boost in activity when needed and then a shutting down of this boosting to save resources and also to prevent further activity when not needed. The shutting down is mediated in part by PDCD1. So shutting this gene down will ensure that the BEAM201 cells will go in hot into the patient relentlessly hunting down every single one of the cancerous T cells until they are all dead, dead, dead! I want to coin the term BEAM standing for base editing and multiplexing. <laughs> But unfortunately, I'm not their employee. But Beam's Beam is truly game-changing because for the first time, they're able to show that a quadruplex base editing works. Not only that, it was done to create the sharpest possible solution there is. Since the quadruplex base editing is done on the Beam 201 cells and not on the patients themselves, this will reduce the chances of adverse side effects and increase the chances of success of the clinical trials. And that may be one of the reasons why Beam 201 has advanced so quickly into the IND phase as of August 2021. I cannot wait for BEAM to turn their attention to the other cancers using the multiplex base editing. Phew, that's quite a journey that we have had today and a lot to ponder about. I've left timestamps on this video so that you can jump back if needed. And the next video I'm going to release is going to be a rant against Tom.